JJ's gone, and we didn't really see it anymore, not effectively at least. Where does Stanford go? I still think they got a fade target, Daniel. I think they got a really good fade target in Simi Fajoko. I mean, that guy has the perfect body for it. He's 6'4", 220. I mean, he's the kind of guy that is going to intimidate most cornerbacks uh, because he's going to tower over them. And we've seen that he has good hands and that he has breakaway speed even for a guy that size, but he can go up and high point the ball. And that's what you need in a goal line fade situation. We know how much Shaw loves the fade. Uh, you know, it doesn't make any sense if you look at the analytics of it. But I think J.J. Arcega Whiteside, as one Pac-12 reporter said, has single-handedly uh, justified the existence of the goal line fade. Well, Simi Fajoko is right out of the J.J. Arcega Whiteside cloth. And I think that uh, we're going to see them do a lot of targeting him in the red zone. And on the other side of things, I'm excited to see the two-back situation that Stanford can operate in this year with Austin Jones and Nathaniel Pete. I see Jones as more of the breakaway um, every down back and Nathaniel Pete as your short yardage guy who's going to be like the classic Cameron Scarlet vulture, getting in the end zone, doing the easy job, not the easy job, but the, the cool job uh, because that guy's built like a bowling ball and uh, there's no better place for a bowling ball than on the goal line. Agree with you there and uh... – Seeing Houston Haimuli lead the way there at fullback, I think Stanford may have something at the goal line. But I I'm, am going to agree with you that they need to go to that fade. I'm going to throw in a few other options. I think Semifoco is great. But Bryson Tremaine caught three balls last year, all three for touchdowns. Also 6'4", great hands. He was a walk-on, earned a scholarship, really awesome person. And uh, I, he's a great target at the goal line as well. And then you've mentioned it before, but John Humphreys, the freshman who's coming in, he's 6'5". And by all accounts, a very, very talented person, very talented player. Expect him to be another option. And then I did go back, and I wanted to look at the data and actually back up one of your points, right? You seem a little bit uh, critical almost of the fade, but I'm going to say that it's actually it's been working for Stanford, okay? So uh, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go to the goal line plays. Stanford in 2019 had 33 total plays inside of five yards. 21 were rush plays, seven were pass plays, okay? Of the 21 rush plays, four ended in touchdowns. Of the seven pass plays, four ended in touchdowns. So with a third the number of plays, Stanford was just as successful going through the air. And then if you go back to 2018, when JJ was there, we have 37 total plays within five yards, 18 rush plays, nine of those scored, so a much higher percentage uh, that year, especially with Cameron Scarlett, who was really on his, on his stuff there, backing up Bryce Love. And then we saw four of those eight pass plays score. So I think Stanford, especially where they were last year, that fade is where they need to go uh, from now to the future. Those are some great numbers. You're really a proud member of Nerd Nation bringing that out. But that is great research. And I think it does point to something. Stanford is going to need to throw the goal line fade. And they really have needed to throw the goal line fade in the past. Even though it's maybe not the uh, most artful college football play available, it does get the job done when you have tall wide receivers and a quarterback who's practiced it a lot and can put the ball in the right spots. And it's also necessary when you don't have a running quarterback who can punch it in himself. You don't use a read option RPO type system where you can get some cheap ones. And your offensive line hasn't been good enough to just power it through with the run game. Well, that means you got to turn to the air, and when you have limited space because you're in the red zone, you have limited options uh, for those pass plays, and so you're going to look at that goal line fade more often than not. And I think you're right. they got a bunch of guys, 6'3", 6'4", with size. They also have some guys who can run with speed. I think of Osiris St. Brown. I think of Connor Weddington. I think of Michael Wilson is kind of a hybrid between those two. But they have done a – a very concentrated job of recruiting big wide receivers, and that's going to pay off. I do think Stanford should be a good red zone team. Whether they're a good down-to-down -down offense, I mean, they haven't been in a while, really. In general, uh, in recent years, they've been a big play offense that has not been able to sustain drives because they don't have enough of a running game. I think that might be a problem again, but I don't think it's going to be the red zone that's going to be the issue, uh, even without that clear-cut guy to give the ball to. Yeah, I was impressed looking back at the number. 